In this video, we're going to talk about the one-dimensional displacement kinematic equation. Now, the equation that I'm referring to is this equation, which says that the displacement of an object, that is, the distance the object travels and the direction it travels, equals whatever the initial velocity of the object is times the time during which that object is traveling plus one-half the rate at which the object's velocity is changing times the square of the time during which it's traveling. So that's a lot of information to take in. So the first thing in this video we're going to do is we're going to just make the distinction between displacement and distance, because that often is a confusing factor when you're learning the kinematic equations. The second thing that we're going to do is we're going to learn to apply the displacement equation to solve a one-dimensional kinematic problem. All right, now the difference between displacement and distance is that distance always tells us how far or how close something is. So if you want to think of it, the distance you would have to travel to go from your house to school. And I'll make that point a little bit clearer in the next slide. Now displacement tells us how far and in what direction an object is to a reference point. So for example, it's not only 20 miles away, but we could say 20 miles northwest, or we could say in the forward direction, the backward direction, up, down, left, or right. So displacement always has a sign with it. It could be positive or it could be negative. Now to be precise, distance does not necessarily have to have the same magnitude as the displacement. But unless otherwise stated for the purpose of this video, they have the same magnitude. So let's just make one more point about distance versus displacement. Imagine you're in New York City and you start off at this point right here. And you want to go to a point someplace over here. Now, because you cannot just drive right through each of these city blocks, you, you have to take the road. So you might travel this way for a certain distance, then this way, then each one of these small little distances until you eventually get to that point. The distance that you travel from this point to this point would be the sum of each one of these individual distances. Now the displacement is the shortest distance between any two points, including its direction. So whatever this length or distance is, and then I would also have to throw in the direction. In this case, it might be northwest. So that's the quick distinction between displacement and distance. Now this question is always brought up. Why do we use delta r? And the reason is, if you look at a Cartesian coordinate system, and you have some random point here, which we often just label as point P, and we can have a generic label for that as the point X1, Y1, and then you have another point up here, if we label that point Q, which has the generic terms X2, Y2, notice in the Latin alphabet it goes N, O, P, Q, and if we wanted to know the distance between these two points, between point P and point Q, it'd be the shortest path between them, and in this case we label it R. Notice again in the Latin alphabet, N-O-P-Q-R, and so on. So that's why we use delta R when we're talking about the displacement of an object in general. Now another way to think about it is that in order to go from this point to this point, you can sometimes travel in the X direction and then strictly in the Y direction. Now again, just to clarify this delta R, we can break it down into the displacement in the x direction, and we can break it down into the displacement in the y direction. Now in general, you might see this equation. The displacement in the x direction is equal to whatever the initial velocity is in the x direction, time the time during which the object's traveling, plus one half the rate at which its velocity is changing, times the square of the time during which it's accelerating for. And we could do the same thing for the y direction. The displacement in the y direction is whatever the initial velocity in the y direction is, times the time during which the object is traveling, plus one half the rate at which its velocity is changing, that is its acceleration, times the square of the time during which it's traveling for. Now when it's clear, we don't use all of these subscripts. We'll just write the displacement equals whatever the initial velocity is times the change in time plus one-half the rate at which the velocity is changing times the square of the time. So here's the problem that we're finally getting to. How far and in what direction does a car travel if it can accelerate from an initial velocity of one meter per second at a rate of two meters per second, so the velocity is increasing by two meters per second per second, in a total time of three seconds? So if here's our car, let's just first figure out what's going on in this problem. First, notice that both the velocity and the acceleration are positive. So what that's going to tell us is that the object's velocity is going to increase. And I can represent this in a few ways. I can draw a velocity vector pointing in the positive direction and an acceleration vector 
pointing in the positive direction. So remember, whenever the velocity and acceleration vector point in the same direction, the velocity is going to increase. This car is going to speed up. Now after one second, it might move from this point to this point. After an additional second, it might move from this point to this point. Notice that the displacement during each one second interval is getting bigger and bigger because every single second this car is moving faster and faster. And so the distance it's going to travel in the direction is going to be increasing. Now I can represent the displacement during each one second interval with these displacement vectors and notice that this displacement vector will be greater than or longer than this displacement vector. And then this displacement vector is even greater. The reason for that is the car's velocity is increasing. So it's going to travel greater and greater distances during each one second interval of time. Now, what we're looking for in this video is the total displacement, the total distance and direction that this car travels. So what we're looking for is the total delta x. Now, if we were to go through and figure out what the displacement was during each one second interval of time, the total displacement would just be the sum of all of those individual displacements. All right, so before we begin, let's just summarize some of the information contained in this problem. The initial velocity of this car is going to be one meter per second, so its initial rate of travel is one meter per second, and the rate at which its velocity is increasing that is, its acceleration is going to be 2 meters per second per second, or 2 meters per second squared. And then it's going to be accelerating for a total time of 3 seconds. Now what we're looking for is the total displacement, the distance and direction that this car travels during that 3 seconds, which is going to be this distance right here. Not only is it distance, it's displacement as well. So I have to indicate the direction. So now what we're going to do is we're going to apply our one-dimensional kinematic equation which says that the displacement of this car equals whatever the car's initial velocity is times the time during which this car is speeding up for plus one-half the rate at which the car's velocity is changing, in this case the rate at which the car's velocity is increasing, times the square of the time during which this car is accelerating for. Now we know the initial velocity of the car is one meter per second, and it's accelerating for a total time of three seconds. Then we're going to add to that one half the rate at which the car's velocity is increasing, which in this case is two meters per second per second, and then we're going to multiply it by the time, and then we're going to multiply it by the time during which the car is accelerating for, which in this case is three seconds. And don't forget, we have to square this entire term. So let's do this step by step. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at this term here. And I'm going to notice that this unit of a second cancels out with this unit of a second. And then I'm left with units of length or distance, which in this case is a meter. So 1 times 3 is going to work out to be 3 meters. To that, I'm going to add 1 half the rate at which this car's velocity is increasing, which is 2 meters per second squared. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to square this entire term. And when I square 3, I get 9. And don't forget, I also have to square the units, which will work out to be units of seconds squared. Units function just like regular numbers do. Now, notice that this unit of a second squared cancels out with this unit of a second squared. And now you get units of length. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue to work through. So I'm bringing this 3 meters down. To this, I'm going to add 1 half of 2, which is 1, times 9, which works out to be 9 meters. And so the total distance and direction that this car travels is going to be 3 meters plus 9 meters, or a total distance of 12 meters in the positive direction. So the object's displacement is a positive 12 meters with respect to the x-axis. 